Well, good morning and welcome to the Technology Source Virtual Roundtable. Today's subject is why SMB adoption of SD-WAN is taking off. Um, if you haven't been to one of our virtual roundtables before, each month we educate our audience on present technology trends, highly impactful service offerings, and what we think you need to know before about uh, thinking about next, rather, what you need to be thinking about next. So a little bit about us and how we add value. Technology Source is a technology advisory firm that has access to 500 different providers globally. We work to provide uh, improvements in um, customer experience, uh, reductions in cost, and um, improvements in efficiency. We also add value in several different ways for our customers via escalation support, additional leverage, uh, recommendations, which we make on 15 specific criteria uh, that uh, I've outlined here, negotiation, helping you get the lowest possible price, budget creation. So don't worry if you don't have the budget, we have ways of helping you with that. And then finally, we do a quarterly business review to make sure that we're helping you uh, ongoing help with uh, projects and uh, opportunities that you may have. Today's special guest speaker speakers include Craig Collister, sales engineer with Spectratel. Craig, welcome. Thank you. How long have you been at Spectratel? Uh, about five and a half years. And where were you before then? I was with it was it was Windstream, but it was Earthlink before that, and a couple other different you know companies. I was under that umbrella for about nineteen years. I think uh, we we followed that same career path. I, I did the same kind of yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Maybe not in the exact order, but similar. Um, Scott Ward joins us with uh, Telesystem. Scott is a senior sales engineer with Telesystem. Scott, welcome. What can Thanks, you tell, Rob. tell us a little bit about yourself and your your background, if you don't mind? Well, I've been with Telesystem for a little under a year. Before that, I was with uh, one of the TSDs, uh, TBI, uh, before that, Rapid Scale and Verizon. So I've kind of been around uh, managed services and and the channel for a while. Um, a lot of different technologies uh, before. Being an SE, I was on the customer side of things, so did a lot of um, uh, administration, security, uh, from uh, with all different technologies. So, been at it for quite a while, and uh, you know. But thanks for having me on; appreciate it. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Joe Brondon joins us. He's the vice president of channel over at Airspring. But Joe, I mean, being a VP of channel sales is a little bit of a misnomer because I think you're a pretty technical guy, and, and you bring a lot of insights which make you valuable because you can share both you know, what's valuable to the client as well as the technology piece. But uh, go ahead and give us a little bit of background on yourself, sir. Well, Rob, I appreciate you trying to team me up against some sales engineers. I appreciate that. Uh, Joe Brown, and I'm the VP of channel sales with Airspring. I, I'll, I'll actually be with Airspring 12 years going on next month. Um, been in the industry for <clears throat> uh, 30 plus years. Uh, actually did some work with XO Communications, uh, and before that, I actually worked for a, a company called Sprint Local Division, where we were a LEC in franchise territory. So been in the industry for a number of years. Uh, appreciate you uh, inviting me to be on the channel and uh, look forward to uh, some challenging questions. So thanks, Rob. Yeah, I know it's interesting. You, the companies you mentioned and Scott mentioned and, you know, I, we've we've all worked for the same companies at some point in time. It, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, and then we've got Jessica Anderson, sales director at Spectratel. Jess, we've worked for a few companies uh, in the past, I think, a couple. Uh, give us a little bit of your background. Absolutely. Jessica Anderson, uh, director of Sales West Coast uh, for the channel. We are an uh, indirect channel-only organization. I've been with Spectratel for almost seven years. Prior to that, I worked at New Edge, Earthlink, and Windstream, which uh, all were the same company, right, through acquisition. But I've been in the channel now for 24 years. Wow. That, that's, I don't want to even do the math on myself. But it's somewhere, <laughs> somewhere around that same time frame, I think. Um, so prior to this call today, I did some research, and I, I really found some enlightening information. And, and you know, Joe, quite frankly, the whole concept came from Airspring, your organization, because there was a comment made that we've you're seeing you were seeing a, a large number of customers in that SMB mid market space that were adopting SD WAN, and so I started digging into this and saying, well, is this something that Joe's seeing, or is this something that the industry's seeing? And it turns out 
The Tech Isle did some research on this, and they said that SMBs are expected to adopt SD-WAN at an incredible rate of 145% this year. So the first question for our panel is what, in your opinion, is driving this growth and, and why now? Who wants to go? Yeah, I guess I'll go. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think the, you know, the, the SD-WAN is really, you know, your next generation uh, type of solution. So we, we've been working with, uh, you know, MPLS and traditional IPsec VPN uh, over the years, but now with SD-WAN and all of the intelligence that's built into it, you know, the, the software control, you're able to take advantage of, you know, lower cost, higher bandwidth uh, internet circuits, and basically be able to uh, 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 create a, a network topology that, you know, is is more advanced and, you know, more efficient than the traditional, you know, uh, MPLS and IPsec type services now. And so that's why there's been such a, uh, you know, a large adoption of it because it's, you know, it's hard to, hard to not do it because it's just so, it's, it creates so much value and so much more efficiency within the network. And on top of that, all the business continuity uh, in terms of, you know, having redundant circuits and uh, really striving for that 100% uptime at a lower cost than you would get, uh, you know, with a traditional you know, older type of uh, solution. Sure. And uh, so, hey, Rob, I'll, I'll kind of chime in there as well. So I think that uh, SD-WAN itself is not necessarily new. It's been around for, you know, 10, 15 years, but it started out at the enterprise level and has slowly filtered down to the SMB space uh, as the education and acceptance has, has increased. Uh, more and more companies have started adopting that kind of technology. And, you know, these days applications, they, they used to be on site, they used to be servers, uh, either on site or, or in a data center, and you ran your own applications. These days they're pushed out more to the web, SaaS-based, cloud-based type applications. And as you, as you push those applications out, uh, the, the need for a more stable, reliable, and resilient internet connection has increased greatly. And so with SD-WAN, you can get um, a, a lot of those benefits, of course, and more. Uh, but I think with the applications being pushed out, and, and the price has really kind of come down over the years as well. Uh, so it's become a little more affordable for the SMB space. Uh, but, um, you know, I think, you know, and of course, too, in the last three or four years, we had a uh, uh, something that uh, in encouraged workers and, and companies to push more employees working remotely. So uh, that also, I think, increased the adoption rate for SMBs. Yeah, good point. And I'll add to that a little bit as well. Um, we're really seeing a lot of customers uh, move forward with a single box solution. So they're going with firewall needs, right? Everybody needs a firewall, but a lot of the firewalls that are out there today, such as Fortinet and Meraki, offer SD-WAN capabilities as well. So you're getting a single box solution. Very nice, good point. Uh, I would also add, I think broadband is such a big, um, is such is such so is used so widely by uh, SMBs that I think it causes challenges when running video and running you know voice calls and and that's kind of led to you know how do we fix this problem is is, is one one other sure. item I think that wasn't yeah. it, 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 it just makes their network it makes their network do more with the applications that they have today, right? It's more reliable. Um, it allows them to prioritize their traffic. It gives them the capabilities of building in redundancy into their network infrastructure. So it, it's doing a lot more than what the standard broadband application uh, that they may have subscribed to today, right? So it, it just takes that broadband circuit to the next level, making it more reliable, giving it more flexibility, the ability to see what's going on with your network infrastructure. Um, and as Scott mentioned, you know, the downward pressures on the SD-WAN applications is bringing that affordability and that capability to the SMB market. So we're definitely seeing that. Well, all great points. Um, this is an interesting one. So from a technology perspective, what makes SD-WAN any different from traditional MPLS or even IPsec VPN, which I think is pretty common in that mid market. Craig, you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Traditionally, um, <clears throat> you know, with uh, with an MPLS, you know, network, it's you know single threaded, and you have a you know a backup circuit, and uh, a lot of times for continuity. Um, but there still uh, there's convergence time in between those two circuits. So when there's a failover, um, you know, you lose sessions, you lose some connectivity for a short period of time. 
what what really you know helps what SD WAN does is it essentially takes multiple circuits uh, into a device um, and bonds those uh, multiple circuits into a virtual essentially a virtual circuit which we call an overlay and, mm -hmm. and then on the other end of it there's either a gateway um, at a data center um, or there's a you know a hub a hub device at a you know customer data center. Um, and that overlay stretches either to the customer's hub or out to the cloud where the gateway is. And so you're able to take advantage of what I think of it as a, like kind of smart IPsec or a smart, smart VPN, able to take advantage of <clears throat> those multiple circuits that are bonded together from end to end. Um, you have sub-second failover between those circuits, meaning that if there is a, a failure event on one of those circuits, um, all that traffic is intelligently routed to the other healthier circuit. Um, and from an end user perspective, in most cases, they don't even realize an event has happened. I mean, they they haven't they don't lose their phone calls, they don't lose their credit card transactions. Um, you know, SD WAN also provides you know advanced forward error correction, uh, meaning that in other words, that's basically like, hey, if if SD WAN's um, the boxes are detecting latency or um, you know packet loss on one or both or you know even three circuits, it'll start flooding or you know uh, duplicating those packets to help remediate you know, any sort of packet loss. And so and that's why we're able to leverage, excuse me, excuse me. Um, that's why we're able to leverage, um, you know, these lower cost uh, broadband circuits uh, because um, there's a lot of network healing capabilities in uh, as well as, you know, the, um, you know, the, the failover and the application visibility and control. And because there's so much software intelligence now, you get complete visibility uh, into every application you can steer, application traffic from one circuit to another you can prioritize every application um and it's you know really just uh, pretty amazing what they've been able to accomplish and um again it all happens with these you know edge devices talking to either a gateway or another hub uh, hub unit and so I, I think of it as like smart vpn but it's a lot more than that um so those are just some of the differences but uh, that's why you know we're seeing such a large adoption of it across the across the marketplace sure I'll just add, Rob, that it it sort of it may make a difference depending on the solution as well, because some SD WAN has security in it, some of them do not. So, uh, in terms of VPN, some SD WAN solutions may not have that option. Um, you know, an MPLS circuit is is uh, a, a secure circuit from a provider, and some SD WAN or most SD WAN solutions can provide a similar type of security. Uh, mm -hmm. But it really kind of depends on the solution. We have four different options that we can choose from, you know, ourselves. So um, it really depends on the requirements from the customer and what they're looking for. Um, some need IPsec VPN, some of them uh, do not. Some of them want to move away from MPLS, which are, you know, more expensive circuits to something where they can just use the cheapest bandwidth they can and, and put SD-WAN with it and, and get a lot of the same effects. But it really sort of depends on the solution. Yeah, I think I think Scott really touched on what, what came to mind with me, and that is um, the cost effectiveness of migrating away from an MPLS private IP solution to a public IP uh, solution with the SD-WAN that gives you the encryption. Um, we're just seeing a lot of uh, cost savings um, and customers are being open and receptive to what Scott mentioned, those SD-WAN solutions that can provide that encryption capabilities, but yet give you the flexibility to be able to look at your network infrastructure, like Craig mentioned. So I think it's all three things. I, I think it's uh, there's cost savings there. Um, the security associated with SD-WAN uh, mirrors or rivals the MPLS private IP networks. And like Craig mentioned, the ability to go in um, and really see your traffic and not only that, but be self-healing. And in addition to that, the ability for that box to automatically drop a trouble ticket to our network operations center where tickets are proactively being opened on circuits that are either taking packet loss or fully down where the customer gets emailed that says, hey, by the way, we've got a trouble ticket open for you. So I think there's a lot of flexibility, cost savings that drive uh, the migration from MPLS over to an SD-WAN solution. Right, no good points. So Technology Source is always working to improve our clients' efficiencies, uh, looking for ways to reduce costs and optimize their customers' experience. 
So I'm, this is a three-part question. I want to hit each one of those three items, efficiencies, cost, and experience. So let's start with, what are some of the ways that SD-WAN can improve the efficiency of our clients' IT team? That's, that's, a, that's a big one. Anybody? Well, I mean, through, through, an, through the orchestrator or whatever a panel you use from the SD-WAN, an IT person can basically look at their network, manage their network, um, and make modifications to their network from a desktop. So, I mean, think about that. You used to have to deploy people to multiple sites to be able to make modifications to your traffic infrastructure. Um, you've got an IT person with a laptop that can do that and be very dangerous in doing that scenario, whether it's a fully managed solution by them or a co-managed solution by their SD-WAN provider. I mean, it basically, it, it takes the, the strain of, tremendous amount of headcount from an IT structure perspective and, and eases that pain, I guess is the be best way to put it, by giving them access to their network and being able to make changes to it anywhere from any place at any time. Yeah, I know. And, and CyberSeek just uh, published an article where they said there was 783,000 openings in cybersecurity, which is impacting IT departments everywhere. So they're, they're having a harder time finding people, especially in cybersecurity and being able to keep your team as efficient as possible and stretching what you've got as far as, as you can is, is, is a valuable part of uh, why SD-WAN is so successful. Scott, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll add that uh, I think Joe's right. And I, I think one of the key takeaways there is the visibility into that side of the network, which you traditionally have not had with other tools. And so with this, uh, I ask you know, customers all the time, you know, how much bandwidth are you using? Just something simple like that. And uh, invariably, the answer is usually, I don't know. Let me, let me check with my provider, right? And then they have to wait for reports, which could take days or weeks to get back. Um, with you know, a tool like SD-WAN, you can see that traffic you know, instantaneously from, you know, current, what it is right now, and then go back in time as well. So it's one of the tools that just can help with the visibility to see what's going on. Uh, because if somebody comes and says, hey, my, my, my internet's down, um, there's all kinds of different places that you could look to troubleshoot, you know, that, you know, that issue. And uh, again, it's just a tool that can help improve that efficiency by being able to see what's going on on that side of the network and, and which you traditionally have not had that visibility into. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, applications just simply run better, uh, you know, with an SD-WAN solution and just take, take phone, like take, take voice, for instance, right? Um, it's very susceptible to latency and jitter and packet loss and some other things that can go on with a circuit. A circuit may not always just be up or down, right? It may be having issues. And SD-WAN can provide, in a lot of cases, some technologies to overcome those issues, to um, duplicate packets or, you know, what have you, uh, to be able to make that connection into a, a much better connection so that, you know, the voice isn't choppy on video calls, you know, it's, it's all very clear, um, even on underperforming circuits. So it has a lot of technologies that can both help for troubleshooting as well as just make things better for the applications. Yeah, and, and, you know, to Joe's point too, it well, wasn't that long ago that you know it was a lot more resource intensive going into routers typing in command line you know it's just you know it, it, trying to figure out how to get something to work now with that single pane of glass and cloud managed environment where you can push a configuration out to you know 500 edges at the same time i mean you're you're, you're talking about a massive scale um you know decrease in scale of the amount of resources that are required to you know make things work and it's just uh you know, just really has simplified, you know, the IT uh, team, uh, IT team's requirements. You know, and Rob, you mentioned it before. It allows the IT teams to do IT, right? It allows that customer's IT to, you know, work on applications that are going to drive more revenue to the business or maybe cost savings to the business as opposed to staying up at night trying to figure out, you know, is my network up? Is it running? You know, how do I push new apps to, you know, how do I get my people deployed at all these different locations? Uh, because, you know, I've got to do some network upgrades or I got to push uh, new technology software uh, to my, my edge devices. I mean, it, it makes the IT people allow them to do business that will drive revenue and cost savings to their organization and not worry so much about the network. 
Yeah, I think the maintenance part of the IT department's job is is a major problem. And I, I think from an outsourcing perspective, that that's risky, right? If your team is just doing maintenance all day long, that's easily replaced. But if your team has been reallocated to be strategic and work on strategic projects that benefit the business, as you mentioned, Joe, I think that's that's extremely valuable and very difficult, if not impossible, to outsource. So for those organizations that want to you know, maintain and grow their, their IT staff, I, I think it's important that you're aligned that way. So moving on to cost reduction. I, I know that SD-WAN isn't always going to cost less, but um, I'd like to see what your thoughts are around um, improving the cost versus some of the other technologies that are out there, IPsec and PLS. Yeah, I'll, I'll oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jess. Huge reduction from MPLS. Um, and with MPLS, of course, you typically have to have, you know, a T1 or greater in order to support the MPLS network. And we're talking about bringing in broadband, multiple broadband circuits, fully diverse, utilizing the SD WAN. You're coming in at a much cheaper rate than going with a full MPLS solution. Yeah, and just so worked on a project that, that I think was uh, very successful reducing costs. We had a customer with 13 sites mm -hmm. and they were all using a 100 meg fiber connection. They had no redundancy on their network. And we went in and designed a solution where we reduced the fiber from 100 meg down to 20. We brought in a broadband connection with 200 meg. And we were able to go back to the client and share with them a 30% cost reduction. Uh, we doubled their bandwidth. And we were able to um, provide them for redundancy. So their jaw was hanging open. Now, I'm not here to say that we can always bring in broadband. In this application, it was not a uh, critical you know, type of traffic that was going across their network. So we were able to use the broadband. But you know, it works great, and the customer's happy. And the reason it works great is because of the error correction with SD-WAN. And without that, it probably wouldn't have been a good recommendation. Scott, did you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I, I typically don't lead in with a with a cost reduction, but it could happen, right? If you, especially if you're going from more expensive circuits to lesser expensive circuits, or you're just simply right sizing the environment, um, and without that visibility into how much bandwidth you're using, you wouldn't know that you could reduce it from 100 down to 20, right? It's um, it's a guessing game unless you have some some numbers to go behind it. Uh, but um, a lot of people just throw bandwidth at a problem and not really necessarily addressing the problem. And um, the problem may be something else. And uh, then you're spending money unnecessarily and inefficiently. So, um, uh, you know, I think, it, I think there are places that it can definitely save. Uh, um, and uh, I think it's it's about the efficiency. It's I think about this whole question or topic here is it's about the efficiency and optimization of the customer's experience and reducing costs is maybe an added benefit um, that uh, that a lot of customers can see. You know, Rob, maybe you you come at it from the aspect of asking the customer if your network is down for an hour, what does that cost you? Right. I mean, think about that for a second. Right. We always talk about, well, I got to drive my expenses down. I got to drive my expenses down. Well, you can cut your network down to the scenario where if it's down for two hours, is it worth the financial impact to your organization to say, well, at least I'm saving, you know, 18 percent on my telecommunications services. But, you know, my network's down for, you know, three, four hours. So, again, you know, what's the needs assessment? How painful is it for you to be down? Well, you know, nobody likes to be down, right? So, you know, we always talk about optimizing and, and efficiencies and those sort of things, but maybe sometimes, and it's, it's like Scott mentioned, maybe sometimes it, it makes sense to right-size the application for you where you're, you're spending as much as you're spending now, but you're getting a tremendously more reliable network in the process, which will allow you to drive business. Again, what's the cost, right? No, it's a yeah. great answer. You're right. Yeah, cost can be hard or soft, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. All I know is is when you tell a customer their network could be down for two hours, they don't look at that as soft cost, right? <laughs> I, I, soft? What do you mean by soft? Anyway, but good point, Scott. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. We'll move on to our next one. Optimize. The customer's experience. So, you know, our clients have customers themselves. And um, 
I believe there's some ways that SD-WAN can help our clients optimize their customer's experience when interacting with them. And we've all had calls that had choppy, choppy audio. We've seen Zoom videos that, that will freeze. Um, and research shows that you know, their customers aren't very receptive to that. Uh, it's a very hard, high amount, I want to say in the 90s, of, of customers that'll just hang up, right? So let's talk a little bit about how SD-WAN can help optimize uh, a, a client's customer experience. Who wants to take that one on first? I don't mind. I, I like to use the example of, uh, let's say, a retail parts store, a car parts store, let's say, for, for example. Um, customers call in if they can't get through, right, or it's a, a choppy voice. Um, they're just going to call the next auto parts store, right, And because they're, they're, they don't have time to sit there and wait on hold and, and, and have a call disconnected, reconnect. Uh, eventually, they're just going to go to the next provider. So uh, when you're talking about optimizing the experience, uh, providing better resilient internet, that's where you're getting at with SD-WAN. Um, and that's just a voice example. Of course, there's a lot of other examples, but, um, you know, if if your employees are not able to get to the application that they need to get to, or it's it's up down. I mean, just there's all kinds of issues that can happen with uh, with internet these days, and, and SD WAN just simply makes that um, a, a little bit um, you know more efficient and optimized experience, uh, so that things are more accessible, uh, they're more available uh, for the for the end users as they uh, you know as they go about their day. Yeah, and. and you know, think about it, think about a retail environment or, you know, restaurant environment and where, um, you know, credit card transactions are critical, right? Because they're almost all IP now. Um, so, when you, yep. <laughs> you know, when those yep. credit, who wants to wait in line for, you know, when your uh, credit, you know, credit card isn't going through because their internet's down, that's the worst. So when you have that, you know, SD-WAN network where, you know, you're almost at 100% uptime, um, you know, being able to process those credit cards all the time, especially during, you know, the busy you know, the busy seasons and the busy, you know, times of the week is, you know, obviously, you know, certainly critical. Yep, absolutely. Anybody else have anything they want to add? I, I'll i add that I think the culture has changed. I think um, companies like Amazon have changed the culture significantly. It's, it's an our society. And Scott, you talked about this a little bit. Um, if you go to a retailer today and, and they don't have the particular shoe you're looking for or shirt you're looking for, being able to say, yeah, oh, we have that at our store in Las Vegas, right? That's helpful. But if you, if you tell the customer now, uh, I'm not sure we're out of it. We're not sure we're going to get it back. And they leave, they're on Amazon before they leave your front door. So I, I think controlling the customer and providing that better experience is critical. Um, it allows for stock balancing. You can see across all your locations and quickly move things around to... Uh, uh, add stock where needed, maybe if something sells better in one state versus another. So SD-WAN just gives you a visibility to inventory levels and reporting like never before, and which greatly impacts that customer experience. And I don't want anyone to think that that's not a big deal because a single star reduction in a, in a social media review will reduce revenue by 40%. So it's a big deal to provide that customer experience. And SD-WAN is one of the ways that we can help our clients improve that. All right, um, this is interesting. Um, I, SMB IT departments apparently now are spending 47% of their time on network related issues. 47%, that's half their day, right? How can SD-WAN help our client partners reduce these network issues? Yeah, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk, uh, take that for a bit. Um, and, and we've touched on it a little bit already, but uh, you know, being able to you know achieve, you know, I mentioned it a few times, uh, approaching that hundred percent uptime, right? Where uh, you know being being connected you know, all the time is is certainly critical. Um, you know, SD WAN helps do that uh, a number of different ways. Uh, first of all, it helps um, you can have you know multiple pathways uh, into a location and uh, being able to take advantage of you know different carriers, underlying carriers, and creating the most uh, you know, creating a, a, as much of a continuous environment as you can um, and also having uh, you know visibility um, you know into the network right sizing the network um, understanding um, you know what what applications are running across the network what applications need to be prioritized on the network um, if there's let's say there's network congestion 
Um, I've got a call center and those calls have to be, you know, that content, that call center has to be up all the time, but yet I've got all this data traffic that isn't quite as critical. I can prioritize that, you know, voice traffic and that, um, you know, those other types of critical traffic over, you know, others uh, very simply uh, just in that, you know, in, in that, uh, you know, web portal. Uh, whereas before it was a, you know, a lot of changes, you know, command line changes. So um, it's really, you know, it's really uh, taken, you know, taken the, the enterprise, you know, to the next level where um, bringing that, you know, keeping them up as much as possible is, um, you know, definitely something that's uh, SD WAN is, um, you know, certainly able to do and, um, uh, you know, and has helped IT staffs uh, achieve it. I mean, to, to add to what Craig's saying, I mean, think about this for a second with the SD-WAN application. Um, the SD-WAN box is going to tell the network operations center for that associated carrier that that circuit's taking hits and going down. Um, at the end of the day, that trouble ticket's proactively opened, right? So the IT departments have some level of comfort knowing that there's a trouble ticket opened that the network operations organizations and the service assurance organizations of that carrier are already digging into and looking into that circuit to make sure, you know, can it can it be repaired? Do we need to dispatch those sort of things? So, uh, on the on the actual trouble ticket side, right? It's automatically generating those trouble tickets for you because at the end of the day, gang, let's face it, right? Networks are going to fail. We know that, right? They're going to fail sooner or later. Uh, and in doing so, like Craig said, uh, we could build a self-healing network in. And as important, you can automatically initiate a trouble ticket and have the associated carrier get intrusive and start looking at that uh, certain circuit to make sure that they're working on getting resolution as it relates to that. So they don't have to babysit a trouble ticket. They don't have to call into the knock. They don't have to open up a trouble ticket, wait for that to come back to them. That's automatically generated through the SD-WAN capabilities going back to the network operations centers for associated carriers. So again, kind of takes them out of the aspect of, oh man, I got to call the carrier. I got to open up a trouble ticket. They're going to have to troubleshoot it, keep me on the phone. That's all being done proactively. Definitely. I'd like to add that, you know, proactively, that could be 2 p.m. in the afternoon or 2 a.m. in the middle of the morning. So. Sure. By the time your staff gets into the office that following day, the ticket's already open, right? We're already working uh, proactively to fix a situation prior to store opening or location or center opening. Yeah, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm a little shocked at the number. It used to be much higher. It's, it's actually come down over the years uh, as tools get better, as there are more tools out there. Uh, that number is going to keep going lower and lower, uh, which is, of course, going to help companies um, because uh, as, as the, all the other panelists mentioned, it's, it's going to make uh, it's going to allow for a lot more visibility, uh, both reactively and proactively um, into the network. And um, it's going to uh, you know, help you be able to pinpoint the problems in a lot quicker way um, with quicker resolutions. And, um, you know, depending on who your vendor is, you may get visibility in your network your your network your LAN side as well uh, as the WAN side uh, but um, you know at, at, I think at the end of the day as, as the tools are going to get better that percentage is going to keep going down as companies are spending more money on on the right tools to help them with their business exactly no, great points all security security remains at the top of everyone's mind how can SD-WAN impact network security um yeah i'll talk a little bit about that so you know security is of course a, a huge component now more than it's ever been uh, for everyone uh, individual users you know residential users up to the largest enterprises it's just uh you know it's a critical component now that we all have to be aware of and especially when you're uh, moving into the smb space and they don't maybe have um, you know, a, a security staff, most most small, you know, community businesses don't have dedicated security folks. Some do. Um, so, you know, security, when when really looking at any network, but especially when you're moving out of, uh, you know, traditional MPLS network, which is quote unquote private, um, moving in using these, you know, public internet circuits, security is a, a huge component. Um, so, you know, and when you're talking about SD-WAN, um, really the security and the SD-WAN pieces are, are, are quickly becoming one one thing 
Um, so you're almost always talking about security when you're talking about SD-WAN. And so, um, you know, it's really important to understand, you know, what a customer's security environment is when talking about or, or looking at a specific SD-WAN, because on one side of it, you have, you know, security uh, security technologies that do SD-WAN, and it's all a single, you know, a single box solution, SASE solution, where, you know, it provides all the next generation firewall in addition to, you know, all of the SD-WAN capabilities, whereas on the other end of the spectrum, you've got SD-WAN that absolutely must have a firewall uh, accompanying it, you know, it doesn't do any sort of security. And so it's a really <clears throat> critical piece of the puzzle when talking to customers is, hey, let's talk about your security posture. Let's talk about what you have in, in place or what you want to have in place, you know, from a security perspective. And then we can, you know, also... Um, you know, talk about, you know, the, the network, you know, the SD-WAN piece. And really, again, it, it, they're almost becoming one, you know, one thing that you have to talk about together, you know, every time. So it's very important. Okay. I, I'm a believer that uh, any, any kind of change in an environment, whether it's application, whether it's um, changing out phone systems, anything that you can do to your environment could impact security potentially. Um, and so it's, it's you know, Im imperative to understand uh, if or how it's going to impact security. Now with SD-WAN itself, it can provide some security in, in most cases. Like I mentioned before though, some SD-WAN solutions do not have any security, uh, but implementing it could, you know, you still wanna look at it and see how it does affect the security if at all. Um, in the SMB market, uh, a lot of vendors are choosing um, SD-WAN devices or security devices that also have other features like SD-WAN or firewalling uh, available in it. You know, you take a case of like a Fortinet where you might get endpoint protection, IDS, IPS, a lot of things that um, the security type products and services that you may not get from other solutions, but um, you can get them potentially in a single solution. So your costs are you know, potentially going to be reduced compared to uh, doing separate solutions. Um, although of course, layered security is the best approach. Uh, some businesses choose to take the approach of, of uh, combining so that uh, it's one solution, one pane of glass to manage all that. Uh, but uh, I mean, in, in terms of circuits and so forth, absolutely. I think uh, you're, you're spot on with that. Uh, if you're looking at, if you already have a secure network, like with MPLS or or some or VPN, something like that, uh, SD WAN can um, essentially replace some of that. Uh, but uh, I think again, I think it, it can be understated. Um, or overstated how important it is to take in consideration security with any change you make to the environment. So for healthcare and medical verticals, there is obviously a different level. Uh, it comes down to being regulated, right? In, in, uh, in terms of being secure, in protecting patient information, customer information. Uh, SASE has become uh, an area where customers are having to you know, implement uh, SASE. It's not necessarily something that's happening too much in the mid-market, but um, I think it still kind of makes sense to talk about it in, in, in the term of when we talk about social uh, network security. So who can tell us a little bit about SASE and how SD-WAN works in conjunction with SASE to provide that necessary security? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so, you know, SASE, it, it, it kind of gets thrown around, you know, the acronym gets thrown around a little bit. And it, it means different things things to, you know, different folks, but really what it gets down to is you have, uh, you know, um, you're, you're, uh, you're locking down the network and you, you get it down to you know, an, an individual user level. So when you're talking about a true SASE, you know, environment, you're talking about, um, you know, web secure gateways, you're talking about your SD-WAN environment with your secure edge, and you're also talking about securing the folks that are, you know, remote workers. So, um, then you're then you're looking at things like zero trust, where um, you know the the individual users are always having to reauthenticate, you know, through automation, but always having to reauthenticate uh, by certificates and things like that to make sure that you know they're they're it's not a bad actor that has come into the network and you know starting to you know create havoc. And so there's this it's very a very active environment and it's a very restrictive environment where you start looking at um, you know permission levels for each individual user. They only have 
you know, you basically silo what they have access to. Um, and SD WAN, um, you know, is is able to, you know, as we see more and more security integrated with SD WAN and vice versa, um, you know, you start to see this, uh, you know, this true SASE environment and the zero trust environment where, um, you know, each individual user is being, you know, tasked with again by automation and other things, but having to, uh, you know, always be um, re-authenticating onto the network and only giving them access to certain, you know, the, the certain resources that they're supposed to have access to. Good, all good points. Yeah, SASE is kind of near and dear to my heart uh, being a, a security guy. Um, uh, but SD WAN is is a as a one component, right, of of, uh, of SASE, and um, so essentially, as as I mentioned before, as as more and more applications, as more traffic is moving out of the traditional walls of your building or your data center, and it's being pushed out to the internet, you have to be able to uh, secure it, uh, but you also need to be able to optimize it and, and create the most efficiency you can with it. So uh, I'll kind of keep this brief. It's just, it's one component. Uh, there are many other components to SASE, but, um, but it's, it's critical to be able to, um, you know, prioritize your traffic and be able to secure it uh, if the need arises for, you know, you mentioned healthcare, but of course, there's a lot of industries that where security and, and compliance is, a, you know, is an essential part of the business. And um, so uh, SD-WAN is one of the things that can help contribute to a, um, an environment that's secure. Right. Agreed. This year, our clients have to do more with less. What are some examples of the benefits of how the SD-WAN orchestrator portal can help them achieve that? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the orchestrator um, is basically, you know, a single pane of glass for everything. Um, now, different SD-WAN platforms have different uh, environments. Um, you know, especially when you get into more of the advanced secure secure SD WAN and, and, and SASE type things, you know, there's certainly more um, things that need to be configured, and sometimes you have to you know move around. But for the most part, <clears throat> you know, in an SD WAN environment, the, the orchestrator is a single pane for for read and write and all your administrative capabilities and all your visibility um, you know, requirements. So um, it, it's it makes you know managing makes managing the network and understanding the network a heck of a lot more simple than having to log into an individual box, bring up the command line, you know, dump out the configuration, bring it into a text file. I mean, it's really, it's really changed the environment for IT staffs, um, you know, to, to, you know, be able to simplify the, you know, the management and the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the network where, and that allows them to focus on more, uh, more strategic, uh, more strategic uh, initiatives of the, you know, rather than having to, always, you know, frantically run around looking for, you know, what went wrong, what's going wrong. You know, it's all right in one, you know, one single pane. And it's just, again, it's really made lives a lot easier for a lot of, a lot of IT folks. Yeah. I mean, to, to add to what Craig's saying, I'll put a sales, it, it's, it's like, it's like opening up a candy store for an IT person, <laughs> right? I mean, they, they look into it and they're like, wow, I can see everything. I can do everything. You know, they're kind of like the great Oz of the IT department, right? They've got the capabilities of, you know, making modifications to traffic. They can see what their usage looks like. And Scott mentioned it not only um, today, but they can go back and look at usage stats. They can look, go back and look at, you know, when circuits were taking hits, what time of day, how big of a hit. I mean, it's basically a candy store for the IT folks. The ability to look at everything within their network infrastructure, do what they need to do with it, be able to monitor it proactively, be able to open trouble tickets if circuits are taking hits, reroute traffic. I mean, it's a do-all. It's a game changer for the IT organizations, quite frankly. It really is. Yeah, I want to add to that too. As a provider that has four different platforms, portal is a very big deal. We walk through the portal with our clients. You know, we talk about, you know, the differences between them all. And a lot of times that portal will drive the ultimate decision as to what platform the client wants to choose. So it is a very good deal. Yeah, we've had customers make the decision to buy SD-WAN after seeing the orchestrator. You know, Joe, to your point of just all the control they have and what they can manage uh, on that single pane of glass, anywhere there's internet, 
um, is, is a very powerful aspect of SD-WAN. You know, and, and maybe I'm being a little selfish, but as a carrier, being able to take the pressure off of us from that perspective, having that customer with the flexibility to do it at their fingertips, um, you know what? Speeds up the process, makes things cleaner for everybody involved. Um, and quite frankly, the efficiencies on their end are efficiencies on our end too. So, you know, we see the benefits of it from a carrier perspective because that customer has a flexibility to do a lot of different things, um, monitor a lot of different things um, through the orchestrator application. So, yeah, it used to be, and it still is uh, in some cases where, you know, for routers, switches, things like that, other network devices, you got to go to each one and configure it. You got to go to each one and, and do whatever you need to do with the, with the orchestrator, the portal, um, you know, that visibility into everything, configuration. You can apply a single configuration, push it out to 500 devices at once, and bam, you're done. And so, um, you know, that's just a, a bill, you know some of the examples of how to they can do more with less in terms of efficiencies it goes back to the efficiencies uh question we had earlier agreed absolutely so there are several provider options for sd wan uh, vmware was mentioned fortinet was mentioned big leaf cisco and versa to name a few uh do, do you have a provider of choice and, and why is there okay. some product you prefer to recommend over another, or is it very customer specific? Very customer specific. So we really want to drill down, have those you know conversations with the customer, understand the needs of today, understand future needs, and then we make a recommendation, you know, based on all of those discussions that we have. So I wouldn't say that any of them. I mean, they're all very different, right? They all have different feature sets. They all have different portals. That some have security, some don't. So it really depends on what the customer needs. Um, based on the requirements. Sure. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I've, I've sold and, and architected solutions with all those. Uh, you know, with the Telesystem, we do um, Foronet, Big Leaf, Cisco, and Versa. And, uh, but, but there's not a one size fits all solution for all customers. Every customer has different requirements. Uh, their environments are different. What they're looking to do is different and really kind of, um, behooves us to ask the questions, to have the discovery calls and really understand the customer's environment um, to make sure we're you know, designing the, the right solution for them instead of having one product and trying to fit them in that solution. We have many products and, and, and it's possible they don't fit in any of the products. And uh, I'll be the first one to tell them. I mean, it's um, what you're looking for is better suited for maybe something else, maybe this, right? And, and maybe potentially give them another solution. Uh, but really it's it's imperative to understand what the customer's looking for. And, um, and but they all kind of offer something a little bit different. No, yeah, great point. Yeah, absolutely. You really, you know, understanding the customer's environment, where they are, where they want to be, you know, um, is absolutely you know critical. And you know, like every you know the other panelists have said, there's there's really not a one size fits all. Each each technology does you know does SD WAN differently. Um, they, they do a lot of things the same, but they also it's the differences that you know make a big difference you know for the customers. So yeah, absolutely gotta gotta understand you know the the customer's requirements and. Um, you know, what, what they're, where they need to be and, and what they're, uh, you know, what they're looking for. Yeah. And sometimes walking through those differences um, will, will sometimes spike interest. So all of a sudden they'll, they'll remember something that that would help with. Oh, I've had this problem. And so going through and offering those different options, I think has been helpful. And Craig, we've, you've done that for me, where you sat down and went through um, uh, Big Leaf versus VMware with a client, and the the customer ultimately chose VMware, but Big Leaf had some unique things that certainly raised some eyebrows, and I think walking through that was was very helpful. So having access to those options, I think, is a big sure. benefit. And, and 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 us as service providers, obviously, we provide multiple flavors of the SD WAN applications because it's like Jessica said, you you just need to do a needs assessment. What's the right application for the customer? So. You know, you're, you're talking to folks that are on this panel right now that don't have a single SD-WAN solution, right? We've got multiple applications and multiple services out there to make sure. And it's like what Scott said, do the needs assessment. And if you're not a fit for the customer, maybe something else is. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is provide flexibility and options to the customer based on what their needs and pain points are, right? Pretty simple. 
one other point that I wanted to add um, is that even, even within the same solution, so let's say you have multiple providers that do VeloCloud, vendors do it differently, right? So Joe, you at Airspring, y'all have your own gateways. Uh, somebody else might mm -hmm. use VeloCloud's gateways, right? Sure. Uh, or the way they manage it, what, what their hooks, their agents, everything. It could be a very different experience even with the same product. So it's very important to not only choose you know, the right company to work with, but understand that there are differences uh, in the products from vendor to vendor, the way they deliver them. Absolutely. All right, tough question. What should a potential client look for when selecting a provider to implement SD-WAN for their business? The perfect time for a plug. <laughs> Even though we're not paying for commercials here. Well, I mean, that could be so many things, right? A provider <laughs> is, and, you know, uh, a knock or dual knock, a provider that has expertise and experience a provider that has, you know, a, an engineering staff that is there to help support. Uh, there are so many things that, you know, a customer is going to want to look sure. for. Um, all very important. An SLA, yeah. right? The right solution, multiple products, you know, and 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 ultimately, Spectatel is going to be that vendor, you know. Um, <laughs> we provide all of those products and we provide a very unique experience for our customers as well. That was a good plug. I like that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's like everything that Jessica mentioned. But, you know, the other thing is at the end of the day, it's comfortability. You know, are you comfortable working with the team that you're working with? Right. Um, you know, are they responsive? Uh, do they have the flexibility? Right. Not everything. Not every every customer fits in one box. Right. Is there flexibility um, in terms of the way it's being serviced in terms of the way you know, you're being communicated to. So at, at the end of the day, yeah, it's all those things, but at the end of the day, it's a comfort level, right? And having access to the right people, um, making sure that they're asking the right questions of you, you're asking the right questions of them. So it all boils down to all of that. But then again, it boils down to, you know, you're comfortable working with the people you're working with because at the end of the day, it's a service business, right? We can put edge devices out there all day long. We can put, you know, all kinds of SLAs behind it. But at the end of the day, it's a service business. And people really like to feel comfortable working with people that they're comfortable with. So do your due diligence on the carriers. Um, ask questions. Um, like Scott mentioned, I found that refreshing. Sometimes you're not a fit for customers and customers aren't a fit for you. And sometimes that happens. But... I kind of liken it to just a comfort level, right? If you're comfortable with what we're doing, there's a trust factor back and forth and you feel like you're, you know, you're going to have that trust with the team you're working with. That's what you go with. You, you almost uh, said telesystem to a T. Huh? You like to say, <laughs> I didn't say airspring. I apologize. That would be airspring. I have the shirt on, <laughs> so let's run with that. <laughs> we we well, tell us we like to say IT is about trust, right? And so you're sure. exactly right, Joe. I mean, uh, ensure that the the vendor that you're going to work with is is a good fit for you, um, that they're asking questions, that they're sort of vested in uh, your business, that they understand your business as well as you do, um, and um, so that uh, that when the right fit, uh, you know, is becomes a very apparent, um, then, uh, then it's easier to move forward uh, because you know that you're going to get uh, the solution that's going to fit your needs and meet your requirements. So, um, you know, there, there, there's, you know, I could repeat a lot of things y'all just said. It's all good stuff. I mean, it's all, all absolutely correct. Joe, Jessica, and Craig, uh, I mean, um, I think the vendors are really, they're all a little bit different, but it's just a matter of picking the one that fits you and the one that you can trust the most. Well, the good news is we help, right? So as a uh, absolutely advisory firm and, and distributor, we look across our providers. And, and one of the reasons why we selected you for the panel is because all of you are premier providers of ours that we know are going to spend the time to understand our client's business, uh, that you're going to make recommendations that make sense. You're going to find ways to fit their budget. You're going to support them. You're going to implement well. You know, it, it, it's it's tough out there. I'll, I'll, you know, a lot of customers rely on a trusted advisor. In some cases, you get, you know, some inbreeding, right? You don't get new ideas. In other cases, people will go to Google and search for five-star reviews. 
Um, both of those are a little flawed, right? And, and in the case of the reviews, there might have been a layoff two weeks ago and the company stripped out 30% of the operations team so where they can no longer implement. So working with someone like us, where we recommend providers, where we know you're going to have a good experience is at the top of our list because implementation is everything. If you're the lowest price and provide the most incentives, but you can't install, nobody cares, right? Our clients want the best, the best in breed solution that implements exceptionally well. And, and all of you do a great job in that space, um, for sure. Well, I want to thank our panelists, Craig Collister with Spectratel, Scott Ward with Telesystem, Joe Brondon with Airspring, and Jessica Anderson also with Spectratel for contributing today. I think you all had some great ideas, some great suggestions, some good input that uh, helped educate our audience on SD-WAN today. I want to remind everybody that March 20th, a month from today, we'll be doing cybersecurity on the virtual roundtable where we're going to be looking at AI verified pen testing and ransomware impact analysis. The bad guys are using AI. You should use AI to fight back against the bad guys. And we'll be talking about that and how you can protect your business. With that, we've reached the end of our virtual roundtable. Again, thank everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks for panels. We'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. All right, bye bye thank now. You. Bye.